that there's no values, there's no stars uh, that are listed below this particular demarcation point. So in this case here, for the salary distribution, there's no employees within the organisation that could be classified as having a salary uh, that is significantly less than, than the other salaries within the organisation. Probably using the wrong word there when I say significantly, okay? Uh, that's typically associated with a hypothesis test. I just say, suppose in the general meaning, there's no, there's no uh, individuals within this organisation that seem to have salaries that are unusually low. Okay. So, I'm just wondering, who are these people? I mean, uh, this is all of the employees. I mean, are these males? Are they females? Yeah. Uh, so maybe what we should do is we should probably maybe try to delve a little bit deeper into who are these particular outliers. Okay. There's many ways to do this, okay? Uh, we could go to graphs, legacy dialogues, box and whiskers plot. A simple plot is what we've done a moment ago, okay? Uh, and I could ask maybe to produce the output based on, on roles, okay? So actually, what I'll actually do here in this situation here is this, is I'll go back, I'll go to graphs, legacy dialogues, box and whiskers plot. I'll look for a clustered plot, okay? Uh, this is where it's going to keep groups of values together. Okay, I'll define. Uh, I've already set this up. Uh, let's actually get rid of employment category and gender here. Okay, so we have current salary. That's the variable I want to plot. Uh, the category axis is I want to include. I want to consider everybody. Okay, and I want to define the clusters based on on gender. Okay, so let's see what happens when we produce this. Keep in mind the variable is current salary. The category axis is company, uh, and we're defining the clusters based on based on gender. Okay, so when I hit that, you can actually see the output that we get here. Okay, so once again, the company it has analysed everybody. Okay, uh, it has told us blue is females and green is males. So you can actually see that. Uh, I suppose one thing that's that's the one thing that's obvious is that in relation to the female distribution there is still a number of uh, I suppose upper bound outliers okay above this particular upper bound whisker okay there's a number of outliers so relative to all other females there are a number of females that could be classified as being paid uh, unusually high salaries with respect to the rest of the female cohort okay uh, in a similar way, we can actually now see with, with respect to the males, yeah, okay, that once again, above the upper bound threshold here, there is a significant, well not a significant, there's a large number of males that seem to be getting paid a salary uh, that's unusually high with respect to the rest of the male distribution. This is probably a nice one here to look at, okay. You can actually see that this whisker here is considerably longer than this particular whisker down here. This long whisker here would indicate some sort of skewness or positive skewness within the distribution because it's on the higher end of the values, with this whisker here being on the lower end of the values. So this longer whisker indicating that the that the number of observations, yeah, that there's a l that the number of observations are more spread out on the right hand side of the distribution or across the larger values. Okay? Uh, so you can actually see another interesting observation is that the whole box and whisker plot for the female distribution is actually lower down than the box and whisker plot for the male distribution. So once again, this would indicate that although there are a number of females that are being paid unusually high values with respect to the other females, okay, well, those particular females that are, have unusually high values or high salaries with respect to other females, they're still not in the upper bound outlier uh, position with respect to the male distribution or with respect to male salaries. So once again, this seems to be evidence to suggest that females are being underpaid with respect to their male counterparts. Uh, that's probably a bit of a leap forward because there's probably other things that are other variables and other parameters at play here. Okay, uh, it could be because of the level of education. It could be because of the particular type of role that in within this organisation that females are generally managers that would typically be getting paid m a higher amounts than clerical officers and so on and so forth. Okay, so maybe what we'll do next is we'll try to delve a little bit deeper into this particular distribution to see what's going on. Okay, so. 
let's once again go to graphs let's go to legacy dialogues let's go to box plots again uh, let's ask for a cluster box plot once more okay uh, and let's actually let's create some panels if that's okay but this time let's create the panels based on the employment category or the job category okay so what we're going to do is we're just going to hit okay on this and what we can actually see is that we get a number of box whisker plots out okay based on the the pa each panel now is looking from from a, an employment category clerical custodial manager and so on okay uh, it's a little bit squashed here okay maybe what we'll do is we'll flip the variables around we'll go into our graphs legacy dialogues box and whiskers plot once again still clustered okay uh, let's let's swap the employment uh, with the gender variable okay so let's swap employment and gender okay so let's define the clusters based off the employment category and let's say gender is going to be our rows so let's hit okay on that and what we can actually see is we get a another another represent another representation yeah okay uh, blue boxes represent clerical officers green boxes represent custodial officers and the lighter green if that's light green or maybe it's brown light brown it uh, represents managers okay uh, one thing that we can actually see here is that there are no female custodial officers okay Co because there's no green box okay there is blue and uh, there is brown okay but there's no green box which means that there's no female custodials whereas there are a number of male custodials uh, cust uh, custodials yeah within this particular organization there are clerical officers and there are managers okay uh, now earlier on we were trying to ascertain uh, you know trying to delve a little bit deeper in to actually figure out what was going on here with respect to uh, the outliers okay but one thing we can actually see when we look across females and males yeah okay um, is that with respect to the with respect to the managers the female managers yeah there's no outliers defined okay there's no stars above the bar here the upper bar and there's no stars below the bar yeah so actually relative to each other female managers seem to seems to be a uh, there doesn't seem to be any unusually high or low salaries associated with female managers whereas in contrast when we look at the male managers yeah okay uh, we can actually see that the male managers yeah okay that there are still a number of upper bounds uh, unusually high values with respect to the rest of the males yeah okay uh, you can also see that in respect to the, in respect to the the males yeah okay uh, that the upper the upper demarcation point for outliers is set nearly around a hundred thousand dollars yeah okay whereas the the highest value paid for females seems to be less than seventy five thousand dollars so there seems to be a suggestion here when we look at it at th this level that when we look at managers yeah okay the female managers are being paid less than their male counterparts okay? now when we look at the clerical officers yeah okay uh, with respect to females there's no females that are being paid unusually low values uh, and also there's no male clerical officers being paid on usually low values as there's no stars below these these particular uh, these lower whiskers or these left hand whiskers yeah in both cases the males and the females there are outliers upper bound outliers in both cases uh, but I suppose relative to each other okay albeit there are a number of observations on the males that are above 75,000 euros yeah it seems to be a little bit more balanced here okay when we look at the custodial uh, level of employment category okay you can see that it's very small uh, indicating that there's not really much observations in that particular in that particular grouping yeah for the males yeah uh, and this can actually be i suppose visualized here from a case processing summary perspective okay uh, you can see clerical officers there are 363 of them custodial officers there's 27 of them managers there's 84 of them but from a custodial perspective there's no female custodials as there's no bars there's no uh, box and whiskers plot here so this 27 must represent uh, all of these observations here so actually there's 27 male custodial officers within this particular organization okay guys uh, and there's many other different things that we can do depending on our variables there's many different ways we can carve our data set up uh, to try to identify uh, the shape of the distribution okay 
uh, and any unusually high or low values. Box and whiskers plots are great for identifying uh, upper bound and lower bound outliers. Okay guys, uh, once again, uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I hope this video uh, was somewhat helpful.